I'm now joined by the women's bantamweight champion and perhaps one day a coach on the Ultimate Fighter, Ronda Rousey. Ronda, any, Ronda, any chance we might see that one day? I don't know, but I would really like to do it. It'd be interesting because I think I'd like to just bring my own coach on with me and uh, to see him freak out on anybody else because uh, I don't give him any trouble ever and I know that some of the people on the show are going to infuriate him and an angry Armenian is one of the most entertaining things I've ever seen. I was just going to bring it up perhaps uh, you know Judo Jean LaBelle could be another coach on there but let me ask you if you had the chance to write the script for the Ultimate Fighter with you being as a coach would you rather coach the males would you rather coach the ladies how would you script it? I would have the house be half guys and half girls. I think that would be the most entertaining way to do it. That is a disaster waiting to happen. All right, listen, it's been a few weeks since your UFC debut. No, it's not a disaster. It would be the luckiest guy team ever. Do you know how much these guys hate the fact that they're under quarantine away from all women for several weeks like that? I think it would be so entertaining. It would be fun. Hence the nickname... Rowdy, Ronda Rousey. All right, listen, it's been a few weeks since your UFC debut. Have you had a chance to finally let it sink in? Uh, yeah, yeah, it sunk in when I actually watched the, uh, the programming, the way that it was from, like, the beginning. I went to my mom's house, and she, like, you know, T-voted it or whatever, and I just got to watch the whole card and the build-up and the walk-in and, like, the whole thing, and when you see it, the way that you watch the other fights. From the inside, it looks like just like any other fight. Like, yeah, it's louder and the crowd's bigger and the lights are brighter, but it's basically the same thing. And um, by the end of the day, I was like, wow, that was crazy. Let's go eat something. And then when I actually sat down and watched the program from the very beginning to end, I realized that, wow, this is real. And this is what everybody else saw. And from all these fights that I've ever watched, now I'm one of those guys. And um, that's when it really sunk in, was, sunk in was a few days later. <coughs> The one thing Sorry. I commend you, though, is that you did not want to touch that belt before you took on Liz Carmouche. The fact is you didn't earn it. Now that you've earned it, have you done anything crazy with it? Um, yeah. I like, got a bunch of seaweed, and I put it on the back, and I pushed some rice into it. I made sushi rolls on it. No, I haven't done anything. I put it on a shelf. I haven't looked at it since. <laughs> All right, it looks like your next fight will be against the winner uh, of the Misha Tate Cats and Gano Boat. But what, what I find intriguing is one of two things. Do you want to face someone you've already faced before, Misha Tate, that there's bad blood there? Or perhaps someone like Cats and Gano, somebody new? Um, you know what? I'm really open to either. Cat is undefeated and. Uh, she's an amazing athlete, and I would love to have a fight between two undefeated fighters. You know, the one, someone's O's got to go kind of fight like that. And, um, but Misha, you know, we got history, and obviously we aren't slumber party buddies. So I'm always happy to fight her, and it's always uh, – the, the past fight did so well that I'm sure that a rematch between us would be a highly anticipated as well. So whichever wins – I'm happy to take on because they, both of them would be, you know, it would be very great to fight them. I was recently asked about the Cyborg versus Ronda Rousey fight, and I, I maintain that it's not going to happen anytime soon, likely not within a year. Is that something you've swept under the rug right now? I mean, she's obviously not willing to go through the effort to go for the fight. I mean, it's just... Here's what it is. If you're pumped full of steroids and the lightest you can get is 145, then it's obvious that the lightest you can get without steroids is lighter. And um, she re refuses to do that. And it's just, I don't really don't know where the sense of entitlement comes from. She hasn't had a recorded win in over three years. I mean, there's so many more women. I mean, look at Sarah McMahon. She's undefeated. She's a silver medalist wrestler. Um, and, and she's... People like that are the people that we should really be looking forward to fighting. I'm not, we're not going to make exceptions and create divisions for someone that um, was a fraud and defamed the sport. She almost destroyed women's MMA. I mean, think about it. The, the whole entire sport stagnated under her, and she cared more about having an unfair advantage in winning fights than she really cared about the sport itself, and it suffered under her. And we don't owe her anything. If she wants the only title that matters, she needs to go in the only division that the UFC has. We're not making exceptions for cheaters. She was exposed as a fraud. She should be the one that is willing to make the changes to clear her name. Encouraging something like that is something that I'm not willing to do. And if we agreed to a catch weight of 140 or something like that, she's routinely come into fights grossly overweight, like seven pounds or more overweight. She, I, I wouldn't put it past her to come to a fight 
agree to 140 and come in at 148 or something like that and be like, whatever, fight me anyway, because she's done it before. And I'm not going to encourage behavior like that. I'm not going to give someone like that a chance for the title ahead of the girls that really work hard and are honest and deserve it. If you want to prove to everybody that you deserve to be called the best in the world, then, then come into the only division and fight for the only title that matters. Fair enough. Now, I don't want to look too far ahead. You did mention Sarah McMahon, and I think two Olympic medalists competing under the Ultimate Fighting Championship banner in a potential main event would be absolutely incredible for the sport. As a, as a fan of the sport yourself, how incredible would that be to have two Olympic, gold, two Olympic medalists competing? I think it would be fantastic. I mean, and it really speaks to the, the quality of athletes that are coming into women's MMA now. I mean, both of us are undefeated right now. Both of us are Olympic medalists in our uh, respective sports. And we both actually started MMA at around the, the same time. I think it would be uh, a fantastic fight. And it would be very, very good for women's MMA and all of women MMA in general. I think I don't I can't remember even on the men's side having two Olympic medalists undefeated and fighting each other for a title. It's never happened. It's something special, and I'm very much looking forward to that fight happening. There were reports, and this comes with anyone that gets mainstream attention like yourself in mixed martial arts, that you were offered a role in a movie, the Hunger Games sequel. Any truth to that rumor? And of course, would you consider acting? Um, to my knowledge, I haven't even started casting for Hunger Games 2 yet. I don't really know where that came from. Um, but, yeah, I mean, people have reached out to us for various things. But, I mean, I've learned from other people's actions before. I mean, I think a, a classic example is um, when Rampage was doing so well in MMA and then he left to go do the A-team stuff. He was out of it for a long time and the movie did well. And... Um, he, he did a really good job in it, but he kind of fell out of that fighting rhythm and he never really regained his stride in fighting again. And that's what people knew him for and that's what Hollywood was interested him, in him for in the first place. And when he lost that, the fighting success that he had before, Hollywood lost its interest. So I really um, am keeping fighting my number one priority right now. And if we can fit in some other opportunities around the fighting, then I'm very, very happy to do that. But um, my window of opportunity in MMA is very short and I'm going to, it's going to have 100% of my attention. And then afterward, I can do whatever, whatever comes along. But um, for right now, all the Hollywood stuff has to work around the fighting and not you know, the other way around. Fair enough. Big belt this week in Noah Montreal between George St. Pierre and a guy you know very well, and Nick Diaz. You spent some time training with Nick. How do you how do you see this fight playing out? I don't know. It's it's some, one of the things that makes this card so interesting is I don't know how it's going to go. I know that uh, GSP is a lot more riled up for this fight, and I really hope to see him returning to that. You know, the actual rush St. Pierre that I haven't seen since that loss to Matt Sarah. You know, I used to be a really big GSP fan, um, but I have seen the way that he, he fights kind of changing over the years, and he obviously has not been very supportive of the women fighters. And um, uh, Nick has always been one of my favorite fighters. I've, I have always admired his fighting style um, since I even started doing MMA. Is there anything that you could tell people that might surprise their opinion and change of Nick? Um, yeah, the, the way that he's portrayed is very far of what he's actually like out, outside of fighting. He is um, very quiet, very shy type, and I think that um, just it gets frustrating with all this media stuff if he, if. Some things things aren't shown the way you want, or some things you can't you can't say things the way that you want to get them out, and they come out the wrong way. And um, sometimes that can cause like a lot of anxiety. And uh, if you're anxious when you're giving an interview, and something comes out wrong, and when it comes out wrong, a lot of people criticize you. And then in the next interview, you know, you're you're it just it, it's a vicious cycle, and it compounds, and it can make. I, I think that it has a lot to do with um, why he's so reluctant to do interviews and things like that. And uh, because it's hard. People are ruthless. And if you're not ready to deal with criticism or relaxed in front of a camera like that, it's, it's something that you end up dreading doing. 
And so if you're doing something that you're forced into doing and you're already an aggressive fighter type, you hate being forced into anything, of course you're going to act like you resent it like he does. So I don't blame him at all, but it's not like he walks around angry and resentful all day. He usually just is like going on about raw gluten free food or something like that. You know, he's a really chill guy. Yeah, he's educated me on my diet on numerous occasions. But one thing I get asked all the time, who wins, GSP or Diaz? You, you know me well enough, Rhonda. I can't go against George St. Pierre, but I'm going to ask you, does Nick Diaz become the new UFC welterweight champion? I think he can, and I think he will. I want this to be a really good fight, and I hope that uh, GSP comes out to fight and not to, to win a couple rounds. And if that happens, then this is going to be one of the most memorable fight cards ever. As always, Rhonda, thank you very much for your time. I know your time is limited. Thanks for everything. Congratulations, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. See ya.